Hi, my name is Susan, Susan I. Ronick. I'm a board certified speech language pathologist and an LSVT Loud certified clinician. I work with the Parkinson's Foundation of the National Capital Area, and they have invited me to do a training, a practice video for you so that you can practice loud in the comfort of your home. Welcome. Today we're going to work on three things. We're going to work on smile, we're going to work on positioning, and then we're going to do some exercises to help you be loud. Because if people can't hear you, they think you don't know. And we can't have that happening now, can we? The first thing I'd like for you to do is to practice smiling. It's as simple as that. Retract your lips. Pull them back. I know a lot of people aren't going to want to do this, and you know what? Do it anyway, okay? Pull your lips back, then pucker, and bring them back again. Good, good. There's a method to the madness. The reason that we do this is because when you pull the muscles back like this and you smile, it releases serotonin. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter that affects mood. It's a mood enhancer. It, it's happy juice. And it goes right up here to your prefrontal cortex. That's where your behavior and personality is. So I'd like you to try again. Smile. Relax. Okay? Bring those. Remember, if I can't see your teeth, it doesn't count. Okay? All right. Again, hold it as long as you can. We all think we smile more than we do. But we don't. And it's so important with Parkinson's, okay? And it's also communicative. When you smile, you invite people in, don't you? Okay? Thank you. Now, your assignment is every time you're in the bathroom, and I know you're going to be in there at least once a day, in the privacy of the bathroom, I want you to look in the mirror and smile each and every time you go in there. Smile. Then close your eyes and beware of your muscles. If you think you're smiling a lot and then you open your eyes, you're going to find out that you're hardly smiling at all. So practice, 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 okay? It's good for you. And when you smile like that, it also releases natural painkillers, endorphins. Much like a dog eats grass when it has an upset stomach, People who grimace aren't really grimacing in pain. They're grimacing because they know that if they do this, it's going to release natural painkillers. How about that? Did you know that? I find that very interesting. Okay, the second thing we're going to work on is positioning. I say, assume the position. And when I say that, that means to sit up straight, as straight as you can. You might need to come a little bit further to the edge of your chair. This is the benefit of having a firm chair and not something soft and squishy. It also illustrates the importance of having a chair with arms. It's just easier to get, get up when you have a chair with arms. So be mindful of that. You want to be on a chair that will permit you to sit upright. Back straight, legs straight, and we call it 90, 90, and 90, with your feet flat on the floor. Your feet should be flat on the floor, approximately a shoulder's width apart, okay? And your palms of your hands should be on your knees or on your thighs, whichever is more comfortable for you. It may seem a little uncomfortable in the beginning, but you'll find that the more you do this, the more this posture will become more natural and more comfortable for you. And I know that the physical therapists and occupational therapists are working with you on core body strengthening. So this is an opportunity to practice all day, every day. Just make sure you're sitting upright. Make sure your shoulders are down. And when you're going to use your voice or eat, never, ever put your head back. Always make sure your head is at eye level or maybe even slightly down. I refer to that as interview level. If you're talking to somebody and you want to say, tell me more, and you get closer to them, okay? That's interview level. Don't put your head back, all right? This is 
assume the position. And the reason we do this is to enhance your breath support. Air in, speech out. You can't be loud if you don't have enough air. This permits your diaphragm to move and your lungs to fill. So you're sitting upright, your shoulders are down, your head's at a comfortable eye level position. I'd like you to seal your lips, please, and inhale very deeply, then blow out gently with pursed lips. Ready? Lips sealed, lips sealed, inhale, and blow out through pursed lips very, very, very slowly. All right, now relax, please, and breathe naturally for two or three more breaths, okay? Okay, now we're going to practice our names. You're going to say, my name is. I'd like you to take a deep breath, put your lips together, take a deep breath, and the moment you can't take on any more air, I want you to start to, you'll feel the M in you, the vibration of the M, and say, my name is, followed by your name. You ready? Okay, everybody, deep breath. My name is, say your name. All right, we'll try it again. My name is Susan. Remember, your lips are sealed until you speak. One more time. My name is Susan. The objective is to be loud, but not harsh, and don't yell. We want good quality voice. To do that, you have to have breath support. Air in, speech out. The next thing is the oral motor. I'm going to demonstrate for you the resonance, the difference in resonance. I'll do that for you again. The only thing different was the position of my tongue. I tried to make sure that the tongue was down flat in the back of my mouth to give me more resonance. You do that by opening your mouth and keeping your tongue flat. So try that again. You're going to take a deep breath, and you're going to say, My name is, and your tongue is going to be down. It's going to be nice and loud. Here we go. My name is Susan. How did that feel? All right. Now let's try one more exercise. We're going to start with, Hi, my name is, and we're going to add a power phrase. Do you all have a power phrase? A power phrase should be an affirmation. You can use your own. If you don't have one, we're going to use, I can do this as the power phrase. That'll be the default power phrase, okay? So I'll go first and then you follow me. When I'm finished, in the meantime, you'll be breathing while I'm doing it. And when I finish, then you will say what I just said, okay? Hi, my name is Susan Ronick, and I can do this. Now you try. You want to try one more time? Let's try it again. Remember, the lips are together until you speak. Deep breath. You're breathing as I'm doing this. Hi, my name is Susan Ronick, and I can do this. How'd it come out? We'll do it one more time. Hi, my name is Susan Ronick, and I can do this. Your turn. Wonderful. Now, 
I'd like you to follow after me, bearing that in mind. You're sitting upright. I want you to say, ho, ho, ho. Say it again. Ho, ho, ho. One more time, please. Ho, ho, ho. All right. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. He, he, he. He, he, he. He, he, he. How did that come out? Do you feel a little bit louder? All right. We're going to finish with our power phrase drill. We generally do this in a group, and it's lots of fun because depending upon the order, some of the strangest conversations come out. So I'm going to say the phrase, and I'd like you to repeat it after me. We're going to do it in groups of five, okay? Here we go. Excuse me, please. Just watch me. Once more with feeling. I haven't finished speaking yet. One thing at a time. That's not correct. Yes, it is. I don't agree. What do you think? Please repeat what you said. These are also good for vocal variety. Here we go. You can't do that. Oh, yes, I can. That's what you think. Not if I can help it. Forget about it. Oh, no, you don't. Why not? I just did. Not on my watch. No, that can't be. I'm in charge here. Is that so? I don't think so. Who told you that? Dream on. Give me a break. Good morning, sunshine. Make up your mind. Give me a moment. I believe I'm next. Don't believe everything you hear. What time is it? It is what it is. What you see is what you get. Is that so? I hope you found those phrases beneficial. You can listen to them again and repeat after me on the tape. Remember to open your mouths. You should have them open two fingers. You want resonance. So your mouth should be open wide. Keep the tongue down. And don't forget to round your lips. We're almost near our time. So in concluding, I want to remind you of three very, very important things. The most important is that if people can't hear you, they think you don't know. So speak up. Be sure to use your loud voice. 
loud quality, not yelling, but loud quality. Remember to smile. Smiling is important. It invites people in. And remember that your vocal exercise, we know that oak exercise is the name of the game for Parkinson's, right? Your vocal exercises are just as important as the physical exercises. You must do them both if you want to slow the progression of Parkinson's and make yourself heard. On behalf of the Parkinson's Foundation of the National Capital Area, my name is Susan, Susan Ironic. And I thank you for listening. Have a good day.